I rise today in the House to speak to a matter that invokes strong emotions on all sides, a matter that speaks to the tragedy of racism and discrimination, and a matter that requires continued vigilance to overcome. Of course, I speak to the horrors of the murdered and missing Indigenous women and girls in this country. The stats speak for themselves, Speaker. Indigenous women and girls in Canada are disproportionately affected by all forms of violence. Although Indigenous women make up just 4% of Canada's female population, 16% of all women murdered in Canada between 1980 and 2012 were Indigenous. The 2019 General Social Survey of Victimization, along with Stats Canada, has indicated that Indigenous women were more likely to experience intimate partner violence than non-Indigenous women. Furthermore, during our study on sex trafficking of Indigenous peoples last June, experts told us that 52% of human trafficking victims are Indigenous, and that the average age of exploitation of an Indigenous girl was shockingly just 12 years of age. The statistics may be even more tragic, as experts told the committee that one of the biggest problems was how difficult it is to accurately track how many victims there are of human trafficking and sex trafficking, as well as how to accurately track the correct number of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Without real effort from the government to ensure that a robust framework is in place with adequate resources that are made available for Indigenous data collection in consultation with Indigenous experts and organizations, the true story of their reality may never be truly known. The government speaker has failed to address one of the core elements in the inquiry, that any plan has an obligation to the victims, their families, and to all Indigenous women and girls to ensure that their voices are reflected so that Indigenous women today and future generation of women and girls can live their lives free of violence. Unfortunately, Speaker, the government's most recent Budget Implementation Act also fails in this regard. With respect to investments in the budget to address Indigenous women and girls' safety, the Native Women's Association of Canada described how they are very concerned that on the surface of this reading of the budget announcement, they don't see where the investment is going to be, and they have very serious concerns about that. The track record of this government has become abundantly clear. Instead of tackling the systemic inequalities, violence and unsafe conditions for Indigenous women and girls in this country, they simply throw money and hoping it goes away. This will do nothing to empower Indigenous women and girls. Rather, it simply grows bureaucracies here in Ottawa. And past governments, to be fair, must share the blame in continuing this broken Ottawa knows best system a system that has a profoundly lasting and damaging impact on Indigenous culture, heritage, and language. For true reconciliation to begin, Speaker, this paternalistic approach to Indigenous people and issues must end. In closing, Indigenous women and girls need a safe, culturally supportive environment in which they are free from violence, sexual trafficking, and exploitation. If we are honest about reconciliation, this and succeeding governments have an obligation to honour Indigenous perspectives when addressing underlying factors that create the unsafe conditions for women and girls, such as precarious housing and poor living conditions, high rates of unemployment, unstable employment and low working wages, and the lack of access to social and economic resources.